What's on guys, I'm Kid and welcome back to a new video. Yes, there has been a long time where I haven't done any videos and this was just due to many factors that came in for a long time. I had a very huge cold, I had literally no voice, I couldn't do any videos, I was playing badly and everything came together. I was just laying in bed for one week and afterwards I was one week on vacation and then had to organize different stuff for my new job and my new flat and different kind of things but now I'm finally back and can do videos again and I will start over with a very special video with a um, yeah a cool video in my opinion because that's just something new I never done this before and on the screen right now you can see a champion you can see my champion I just had an idea for a funny mechanic how a skill in League of Legends could work and then just try to create a skill set create a champion concept around this one mechanic and then just jumped into Photoshop and googled some images about black assassins and stuff and threw together uh, a prototype splash art and yes for all of you out there it is the guy from Assassin's Creed don't bother telling me this I know I can't draw a full Armored Assassin, I just took whatever I got from Google to just show you how I feel this champion could look and play. And I just want to go over his different skills and his play style and then just want to have a little discussion because as you can see below my other videos I really like to discuss, I'm heavily answering questions and answering comments so if you want to tell me anything, if you want to just have a little chit chat with me then leave a comment and I will most likely be answering. So this is Blaze the Shadow Walker. I don't have a lore yet, but he could be related in some sort of a Zed or Talon or because he's like that shadow assassin kind of type like Zed, but his skill set is kind of different and also his purpose is different. Because Zed you pick Zed to jump in and eliminate the target where he stands and jump back out. But Blaze is different. So um, let's go over his passive. His passive is called Attract Attention and I wanted, when I designed or created his skills and his passive, I wanted to make it feel like a real assassin and I wanted, also wanted to have it, uh, to have a counterplay for everything. So <clears throat> if you imagine a real assassin, he plans his assassination. So he goes over everything and makes a perfect plan on how he's doing. And then when he tries to assassinate somebody and he fails, so he needs to use more actions and he needs longer time, he makes himself vulnerable because he shows himself for a long time and the enemy can react. And this is what his passive attract attention should represent. Every time Blaze activates an ability that hits an enemy, he loses 10% of his armor and magic resistance. So and this number decreases over time if no enemy has vision of Blaze. So the longer he has not being seen by the enemy, the longer time you could say he has time to plan his assassination and this number in which his resistance is de decrease will decrease. So it will go down to about 5% and then of the first spell up to 7 and then to 10 for example. So that he can make the first move without losing that much resistances but as I said if he uses more spells he makes himself more vulnerable. This is passive. So. Then we go into his Q, Throat Slice. This is what should make him a threat. So, Blaze strikes twice in front of him with a channel time of 1.2 seconds. Of course, all numbers are just poor work in progress and just what came to my mind. You can imagine this like the Nidalee Swipe. So, he, it, it takes his facing, or the, the old Nidalee Swipe actually. It takes his facing direction and swipes left and right. But with a ch channel time of 1.2 seconds, but which doesn't interrupt his movement, so he can move uh, while casting his Q, but he just can't cast any other spells or cast, I don't know, anything else. But uh, dealing 75 plus 95 percent bonus 80 in the first and 40 plus 90 percent bonus 80 in the second strike. An enemy that is hit with both strikes is silenced for 1.1.2 seconds because he just got his throat sliced open, so he's silenced. So again, he uses counterplay part. With this long channel time, you have time to dodge the second strike, but if you don't, you get silenced. Also, he has very high scalings to get a little bit of late game power. Then we have his W, which is Abduction. 
again takes his facing direction into account. So Blaze next auto attack. What I didn't state here is that his next auto attack will only deal 25% of the damage. Blaze next auto attack will stun the target for one second and drag Blaze and the victim in the opposite direction Blaze is facing, dealing 70 plus 80% AP damage to the target and 45 plus 60% AD to all enemies he's passing. So this is this mechanic I built Blaze around because I thought, okay, there's no champion in the game that just rips you out of your team with himself, which there that's kind of Poppy, but Poppy is always dashing forward and not really the feel of what I wanted to it, it to be. So again, so you, I choose that to be an auto attack targeted spell to have a counter play because if you make it a click and point or point and click spell there's no counter play you can't deny him this abduction but if you make it an auto attack there's the possibility of blaze failing the auto attack and auto attacking a minion or you can flash in front of the uh, ADC and then he will auto attack you and yeah so because he's melee he needs to get a melee range then he's dealing AP damage, so if you build him 80, you won't really do much. But if you're passing enemies while dashing backwards, so it's it's about the distance of let's say an Ezreal blink backwards, um, and the range increases with leveling, of course. So if you rip the champion you want to abduct, if you rip him out of the enemy team. You normally don't pass any enemies and you don't deal AoE damage. But if you're deciding to rip him into the enemy team, so basically away from your team, you deal a good amount of AoE damage to all enemies. So you have this bo two choices if you uh, take him into the enemy team or away from the enemy team. And then we have Shadow Dive, his E, which is a skill that makes him mobile and which is also very interesting. Blaze Dash is a short way towards the targeted unit to blink and appear behind the target enemy. Afterwards he is invisible for 0.6 seconds until he casts an ability or receives damage. This, uh, the target's armor is reduced by 25% for 5 seconds. So imagine it like a combine of Lucian Dash or of Grace Dash and an Ezreal Blink. So it has overall the distance of a Cassidy Ultimate or a LeBlanc distortion and the first third of this way he will dash and th the other two thirds he will blink so this will make again counterplay possible because if you see him dashing you can throw your cocoon you can throw your binding or whatever your scroll control at him while he's dashing and prevent his blink but if you can't stop him while this dash happens he will be unstoppable and just appear behind you and because you're scared now, because oh my god, I'm getting kidnapped right away, your armor is reduced by 25% for 5 seconds. And then he's invisible for 0.6 seconds or until he casts an ability or receives damage. So you can, again, throw your AoE damage just beneath you uh, and make him visible with that. So then we come to his ultimate, Hijack the Dark, which is also, I think, very interesting and makes a lot of cool plays. Blaze turns invisible and dashes towards the target unit, applying a hijacked shadow onto him. So this shadow will just stick to you. You can't cleanse it, you can't flash away, okay maybe you can cleanse it, I don't know. But you can't flash away, you can't dash away, if you jump, if you do anything, walk away, it will follow you because it's your shadow now. And let's go on. He then will try to find another victim in a uh, 550 range also playing a hijack shadow. So ima imagine it like um, Master G's Alpha Strike. So you queue one target and it will just jump on to the next targets in line. Like like a Master G Alpha Strike. But it will only go up to 3 so it will uh, bounce up to a maximum of 3 hijack shadows. Each shadow will last for 5 seconds and deal 30 plus 90% AP every second. By reactivating this ability, Blaze can cycle through the hijack shadows and switch places with them, but all only once. He can jump to every shadow once. All of his abilities' cooldowns get reduced by 60%, but keep in mind every activation applies attract attention onto Blaze. 
So this is very complex and seems to be a little bit OP in the first place, but if you look at it the right way, you see that it again has counterplay. So he has applied three hijacked shadows onto three enemies. And he will be invisible, the same invisible principle for Shadow Dive, so inv invisible for 0.6 seconds or until he casts an ability or receives damage. And he will be right onto the first hijacked shadow. And if he then presses R again, he will jump towards the second shadow. And if he press R again, to the third. But he can also, like, this is how where, where his place that it comes in. In team fights, you would try to get the hijacked shadow onto as many people as possible. And of course, you want to have it on the AD carry or the AP carry. And then be at the first target, use abduction to rip him out of the enemy team into your team, reducing. Um, the number power and then just pulling it, pulling him into your team, your team can collapse and destroy him. And then you use Hijack the Dark to jump back in and reset those cooldowns by 60%. So you can't, you can never reset your cooldown to zero because it's a percentage number, but it will go down to a short number. Then you can use this um, invisible time, invisibility time, to let these cooldowns run down and then reposition with Shadow Dive. Pull the next member out with abduction. Use throat slice to silence him and deal damage. And again, jump back in on the third target. Reposition again with shadow dive. Pull out with abduction. Abduction, and you throat throat slice again. But if you just, but the thing is, if you do this three times, you apply three time attract attention through your ultimate, and at least three time for abduction. That's six times 10% less armor and magic, magic resistance. So you're basically giving the enemy true damage onto you by using this powerful ultimate. So if they can somehow even touch you, they just need to throw down. Uh, I don't know, Morgana Zoil beneath all of them, and you're just getting shredded. So this is a very powerful ultimate, but in the same uh, moment, it makes you so vulnerable because you use so many spells. And this uh, cooldown reduction is just needed because he has his abduction and shadow dive have high cooldowns compared to other champions, and then this is needed to pull off this quick combos. And again, all is based on his uh, facing direction. So, so his Q is based on his facing direction and his W, and his E reappears behind the target. So again, it's kind of afflicted with the facing direction. So this kind of makes the part of this champion that lets you do skilled things. Because when you know when you face which direction you can pull these combinations off very quickly instead of when you have to check and reposition every time. This is Blaze. This is the champion concept I made and I really like it. I mean, hey, why not have this champion that just jumps into your team and rips your team apart? It's just pulls out different members, silences the important damage dealers, but makes himself very vulnerable at the same time. And with the different scalings I put on him, you, he gets different playstyles. You can play him on the full glass cannon AD, but then it's real glass cannon because those little bit of resistances you have will also get shred down. But then you will of course be this assassin guy that maybe can kill someone on its own. You can build him tank to be the one jumping in and out and pulling people in and out without dying that fast because you have that much of resistances that you have like a pool of resistances you can shred down. Or you can build him AP to be that one person rip off assassin and deal a good amount of damage with your ultimate. Or maybe hybrid, I don't know. There would be many different playstyles for Blaze and this is what I like about him. I would imagine him for a jungle because it takes makes the most of his passive and his ganks are very strong with shadow diving in, silencing and if you then try to escape he just pulls you back into his own laner and uh, his ultimate is perfect for the gank on bot lane with an easy double kill. I think that this would be an interesting champ concept, of course it has to be balanced here and there but I just want to know what you guys think of it. 
Just let me know in the comments. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? What do you think is too strong, too weak? Do you would you like having him in the game? Would you like playing him? Would you don't like him in the game? Then tell me why. I love to have a discussion, I love to have a conversation. And I want to be more active now again. So this was the video for this time and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and keep subscribed. Peace out. Good luck and have fun.